Okay. Uh, greetings, Matt, Magnar, um, any of the Valve staff who may be watching this. Not sure if this is going to go out to public consumption, but if in the event that it does, greetings, community. Uh, I've put together a couple of uh, DE new critiques that I think you may be interested in seeing. Um, and for those of you who are not interested in hearing the uh, the strategic overview on why we're doing this, I'll, I'll timestamp this so you can just kind of jump ahead to the tactical stuff and see what my thoughts are. Uh, but otherwise, if you're here for the duration and you want to see the reasoning behind all of what we're doing, I'll let out an agenda right now. We're going to start with the preface, uh, and then we'll move into um, the the data and the insights, uh, the analysis, and then we'll move after that into the execution implementation, and finally uh, talk about some risks and conclusions. So as we load DE Nuke here, uh, let's talk about what it is that we know about DE Nuke. DE Nuke's been, for all intents and purposes, retired, right? Watch it's uh, These boys have got a bit of an arsenal and they don't it's no longer being it. used because the halves that are being played are uh, in ending in 12-3 sides, 14-1 sides. Um, it's generally allowing for uh, less skilled teams to have significantly better results than they should against teams who have uh, higher skill ceilings or just are generally more skillful in teamwork. Uh, let me change this P round time. So to that end, we need to identify why this is happening and how to increase terrorist winning percentage uh, in a fair way but in a way that still skews toward the counter-terrorist side, retaining the personality of Nuke. And I've built out um, a, a nice model here that I'll show you in just a second that will, uh, that will determine how my thinking goes and perhaps illuminate for you why you should uh, believe what I'm saying. So let's jump on over to that. Let's see if you can see this. This is a uh, pretty simple decision tree. Right now I'm zoomed out so far that you can't even see anything, but uh, the tree is a decision model that allows you to determine the risks by probability percentage of success or failure by going the pathway of upper bomb site in DE nuke. So up here where things are less marked off, these are more or less just counterweights to make sure that the measurements are accurate. You can see that I haven't really even fully flushed out these ideas over here uh, like I have with the observations down here. Let's talk about the assumptions before I dive in. Average starting cash in round four, which is the pivotal gun round, uh, is 4750, and the round four cash per team is therefore 23750. The uh, the cost of a buy and the cost of team full buy and uh, and the round win is here. The team full buy is different than the uh, is different than the overall uh, because you are not necessarily expending all your cash going into that round. So let's get to the observations. We are not measuring by round wins. In fact, I've, I've reconceptualized this in terms of cash used because uh, with, the, with the, uh, the usage of round wins as an uh, observable metric, it becomes a little bit insensitive to measurements. You start getting estimations that doesn't necessarily move round wins one way or another. And cash, I thought, was a nice way to conceptualize this entire um, uh, decision model because it, it's uh, the numbers are much more flexible and there's a lot more nuance involved. What's nice about it is that also the Counter-Strike economy is inflexible, so there's no change in rates or diminishments or inflations. All we can do in terms of levers is percentages and weights, so that's what we have marked off here. These are percentage probabilities of scenarios. Um, for example, what seems to be uh, a fairly obvious one is, uh, I actually have the weights misleading right here let's say uh oh no the weights are fine the probability of uh, let's say two defenders in a bomb site and two casualties but still winning the round is uh going to be 0 0.119 11.9 percent which is 0 0.3 times 0 0.6 0 0.4 times 0.45 which will give you the maximized revenue per uh, team spend in this uh, decision scenario of about a value of twenty four thousand two hundred dollars in the round win or the round loss scenario conversely at two hundred and fifty dollars you 'll see that um, uh, the basic outcomes of the two defender scenario has is uh, just slightly above the invested income required to take the upper bomb site it 's fourteen seven four four compared to the maximized value of simply just taking upper 
in the general whole. Um, it's still a little bit uh, less than the cost, but we also know that upper right now is fairly imbalanced. But what we know is it's not that imbalanced. It's only a couple thousand dollars off. And for five players, that's kind of fine. Um, but it significantly drops off. I mean, falls off in a big way when you come down to the three defender scenario. And I haven't said anything revolutionary thus far uh, in terms of what Counter-Strike players understand. Yes. Um, yet, like, for example, yes, Cotton, going into a, a three defender bomb site is mostly suicide because the, t the CTs have stacked it and you should be punished. Uh, and I, I totally agree. I totally agree. These observations are just a tool to get us to our, our next point. When you have three defenders, because of this significant diminishment to uh, roughly a half of the maximized value and you know, less than half of the committed uh, spend per team, you have weights that are really, really painful. Two plus casualty scenarios in the three defender uh, bombsite take, very, very likely. So our conclusions then, or our observations then, is the difference in success rate between two defenders and three defenders is so drastic that the in-game leader's prerogative is to ensure with enough information that, uh, that the two defender scenario is what exactly their team is running into. So we do a value of information analysis, which is this other sheet, uh, I think it's the VOI sheet, that shows you um, when we skew with a clairvoyant, like in quotes, clairvoyant knowledge, like a 90% chance that there will be a two defender scenario, the value of the set piece play climbs to roughly positive $4,600, almost a, a, an entirely new player, like a six player's worth of economy. Um, so we know that by, ha by isolating this amount of information and uh, reducing the amount of exposure to three defenders in a bomb site, you markedly increase the ability to take upper bomb site on DE Nuke. And I'll make this model um, available for consumption. I'm not sure if I'll make it available for public consumption, but definitely I'll send it to your guys' emails to check it out. Um, so what does it all mean? Well, if I can just read here, right? Uh, I know it's bad, bad presentational skills, but if I can just read this, it's prohibitively expensive to attempt to take upper bomb site on DE Nuke. Uh, but if we can isolate the two defender scenario, we see that the attempt to take the bomb site becomes value positive. And this leads us to believe that restricting CT information, movement, and ability to force multiply at the time of defense would incentivize terrorists to take a high risk bomb site path like the pathway to A or upper. Now, let me see that we're capturing the right scene here. Yes, we are. As of right now, we're looking at DE nuke, and we know that. Taking upper is a monumental task. In the pro scene right now, you blow this door off, you throw a flash in, sky flashes come through, smokes fly out. The average spend, having have to, after consulting with uh, Steel and Hiko re very, very recently, as of today recently, is like something like $1,600. Doing so is, first of all, calculated into the model, so it's not something that's lost on me, but it's also something that's really, really demoralizing when it happens and it doesn't pay off. Secondly, to change anything for the better on DE nuke presently, you'd have to increase rotate times. Maybe like elongate the wave through here, elongate the wave through to hell to heaven. But when you start doing that, you get new pathways that are very unnuke like. You actually start changing the map to something like a DE season or a, I don't even know what what has very lateral uh, rotations. It doesn't necessarily matter. If you start to lose the personality of DE nuke, then the whole critique that I'm doing is is mostly useless. So it has to be much more nuanced. The reason I bring this up is because I noticed in the community these days, there have been a bunch of nuke edits, mostly as, as knee-jerk reactions to, like, uh, to Valve pulling the nuke from the active duty pool because people love nuke. Um, but the 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 changes that have suge are suggested are mostly anecdotal. Like, I die frequently here, so change something out here, or uh, add some boxes. But they don't necessarily attack the heart of the problem or adjust it with enough uh, of a fine comb to, to do it with uh, finesse and make, make the appropriate changes. So if we do this in more of a, a data-driven way and we do it in small increments, because we note that in the model that you just saw, it's highly sensitive to change uh, in, if if at all, if you got anything at all from that, is that the, the probabilities of change uh, have a lot to do with uh, average, average revenue gained per bombsite take, including the risks. So basically what I just said was, let's, let's make the changes incremental and subtle 
to begin with, uh, and try to skew the round wins not to 8-7, perhaps, but like 11-4, 10-5, and then start making gradually more changes if it's needed afterwards. Um, okay, let's jump over right into the tactical execution. What does implementation look like? Uh, well, I can show you, because some very kind soul, Hordo and uh, others, have helped me visualize this. Uh, it's not complete, but this is just for demonstrative purposes. Um, we have a lot of things to discuss about the Nuke. It's not even fully rendered or, or compiled. It's just purely, purely for demonstration. This is the new bomb site in DE Nuke. The lighting is off and not every change is in, but it doesn't necessarily matter. I'm going to tell you the tactical implementation, and then I'm going to tell you how that links back to the observations that we made earlier, because you may not be able to bridge the data to the changes themselves unless I explicitly say them. So uh, we'll, we'll go through the changes first. So the change, push, push, first one, push. and most noticeably, is we've moved this door 90 degrees over to its wall right here. We've also added a window, but this window is actually just a carbon copy of the one on the other side. We envision it uh, to be roughly about half its size and a little longer. We've also backlit the Heaven player so that his head is more visible. We've raised the silo up onto a platform, which is not very pretty. We've extended the width of these boxes. And we've also removed the self boost and we've added two extra skylights, moved the existing skylights over to the corners, likewise on this side, and added a canopy on top of the, uh, the window exit of the hut. Um, intended to be pierceable, but still added a canopy. Uh, also, I'll talk about this later, but that's not important. So exiting this, uh, this doorway, let's talk about this initial change here, is, uh, is a pretty big task as, uh, as Nuke has presently. But it allows T's here to have a one-on-one -on -one pick battle if they so chose, and it'll also consider something that we'll be talking about right now, which is the level of exposures to the number of CTs. The data that we showed you earlier showed that because a counter-terrorist here might be uh, too strong. His ability to defend the bomb site despite flashbangs is very, very strong. And even if you don't have considerable amounts of skill, the muzzle climb here might be able to nab you a few headshots or dinks that you don't necessarily deserve. However, moving perpendicularly across a small opening with limited exposure time only allows for a couple of meaningful shots here. And this reduces the power of the Mustang player considerably. Likewise, they're still exposed, but the terrorist now has the ability to protect himself with this now built-in angle that we've Throwing smoke. designed. Where the terrorist can cover himself up, that wasn't super clean, but the terrorist can cover himself up and mask his movement here. Now, we don't want this Mustang player to be entirely disenfranchised, so this window's been added in such a way that, if I can just mark my place, in such a way that the player playing this position will be able to see feet and torso, but not head. The head will be shielded unless this player goes for piercing headshots, in which case we'd like to reward him with headshots. The second defender in this area will most likely be Heaven, and we've moved this silo slightly higher so that he can make a very, very difficult headshot here, or have to commit by exposing his body to engage the, the enemies coming out. This is fair, we feel, because you can slow down your play if you want to flashbang the player in the Mustang, and go for a pick here if you wanted, or even just come out, or excuse me, or even just come out crouching and duck the shot. There is a, uh, a limitation in the ability of these players to contribute to the fight fully or command powerful positions for the entirety of the round. We've made it much more dynamic to play these positions, and now they have to maneuver and become mobile assets to their team, lest they just be completely useless after the bombsite take. This promotes terrorists coming out quickly. It also, with this smoke here, gives them options to play slow and fast or even create their own corridor for themselves and smoke plant if they chose in the future. Now, what we haven't mentioned is we would prefer that this I-beam, because this I-beam now, I think in particular, becomes really strong, 
becomes a net, something that you might see in like DEC side, where the net is pierceable, a flashbang could permeate through, uh, and it wouldn't benefit or bestow any defensive position to the counter terrorist playing on top of this ivy. It will also catch any flashbangs, molotovs, or smokes thrown here, so you can now displace this player if you so chose with a molotov and make him maneuver and lose his accuracy, or flashbang him and have it caught right here and affect the entirety of the room. This net, I think, is very, very important to us. Uh, we'll talk about that again at the end. This player has had his window slightly boarded up. We actually want this to be fully covered. We do this because this position is particularly important. He, in the old version of Nuke, has been able to harass players coming out of the hut and now can still harass players coming out of the, uh, the hut from the other direction. But we don't want him to be able to contribute in all facets and also the squeaky and also defend the bomb plant. So we've taken away one of his visions, but we've also kept that angle alive in case somebody wants to play the high risk position here and hold on to the window because this T still has the ability to counter pick. We want to widen this doorway just slightly so that there can be a one-on-one -on -one op battle. If you want to run an isolated pick play instead of a set piece, and we've also made it so that the height of the window will allow for a crouch peak pick. You can likewise do it for the Mustang player, depending on how subtle you are with your slide out. This is fine with us because it allows for players playing in the silo to still contribute, and you have to take a calculated risk as an opera as you slide out to have your vision away from this danger area. The danger area being the silo, and also right side, this window will be higher, so this will be more likely like a, a window you throw nades into, but also on the doorway. This promotes shotgun play, rifle play, mid-range play, and also allows for players who want to use long-range play still use their scoped weapons inside of this very confined space. What else? We've moved the, uh, the skylights over to their corners here because in previous iterations of this map with the skylights uh, slightly ahead of the players, we noticed that through observations of professional matches, players were so fast in flicking the flashbangs because they could see them coming through the skylight that they would, uh, they'd be unaffected by the upper bombsite take. Now with the skylights above them, they have to be more skillful. They'd have to hear the glass break and anticipate the flashbang coming down because it's off screen. For example, if I was scoping here, it would be off screen and I'd still be blinded. Likewise for this player here, likewise for that player there and there. What else? Ah, yes. Finally, we get to the reasoning behind all these changes. There's a window here, there's a door here that's slightly larger, the hut's bigger, this is raised, the lighting's different, the skylight's different. Why does all of this matter? Well, let's draw the, uh, the comparisons back to the data that we saw earlier. The objective is to make the counter-terrorists engage a force of two counter-terrorists, but because the map is nuke and the rotation times are naturally short, we can't actually physically change how many players show up. Like a mini player or a garage player will still rotate from the garage to the mini, and a hell player will still come from the curve up to heaven. Actually, this is supposed to be another railing right here to not make this as much of a skill jump, but ignore that for now. The reason these changes are implemented is because by adding these changes, the probability of a counter-terrorist playing these locations is most likely going to be a 2CT scenario. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or just above you, one, two. The third counter terrorist, in our observation, most likely rotates through mini, the vent, or comes again in through heaven. By making it significantly different, difficult to force multiply as a counter terrorist, you raise the option or the raise the uh, the efficacy of the terrorist force in taking the bomb site and make it much more attractive or incentivized to attempt to plant here. I'm hoping that these changes will skew the, the round wins from 14-1, 12-3 to something like 13-2, 11-4, and even optimistically 10-5 when the meta matures and players figure out a more sophisticated way to take the bomb site. Now, in an effort to address the fact that this rotate is still unbelievably fast, we've disconnected these ladders and made a railing, a quote, railing here that would extend to 
here, that would add just about a second and a half of extra rotate time to this CT, and perhaps even because of the inputs, slightly disorient him on the way up and, uh, and allow the T's to, uh, to fight here. The reason that these boxes have been added and, uh, and enlarged is to make the mini player unable to disrupt unless the T's are very careless with their, uh, with their smokes. Make the mini player un uh, unable to disrupt the play unless he makes the window shot. And make it so the third CT, again, cannot force multiply. Uh, did I capture all the ideas? Net, new skylights, new pop flash abilities. We added, we raised this silo, and we noticed that the gap had actually added some uh, some funny gameplay dynamics when we first began testing this. But we found that we wanted to keep it because the new meta that we had developed was after checking the site, uh, from as many corners as we wanted, our players were automatically pre-firing this, and it added a really, really fun gameplay. Like, are you, are do you communicate to the other team that you're out of the doorway by trying to pre-fire this as a CT? Do you play here trying to jumping up and down with a shotgun, or do you try to curve around like this? It, it added a fun element that we didn't anticipate. So, you can board that up if you want. That's an implementation thing that you decide, Valve. But uh, <laughs> I thought that was kind of clever. We um, removed the ability for a player to self-boost up onto this. And we wanted to make it more consequential uh, that a player should either have to be playing up in the rafters and then drop down onto the hut to play on the hut, or have two players committed onto the floor and have to boost back up, which allows this area to still be used, but make it more of a deliberate decision and something that you need more teamwork to uh, execute. Okay, so conclusions before I go on to risks. What we've concluded is We've now enabled pick play. We've now enabled pick play times two. We've added set piece opportunities. We've limited CT exposure and somewhat increased rotate time. We've narrowed the field of fire for the defenders and given T's an opportunity to operate. And in general, we're hoping that we have just barely added maybe one to two extra round wins per half for a coordinated, skillful T team. Now we understand that there are probably still some nuances to be addressed. I've seen the uh, the critiques that people have made to Outer. I don't necessarily think that affects gameplay too often. And if we're talking about risks, there is all, always the uh, the imbalance of playing ramp. Um, I think most prominently, other people have cited the fact that rotating through vents seem too fast. Um, I've had a couple of, uh, of people I've consulted with simply say that it would be really nice if you just sealed off the back exit to the vents and made that this vent connect to the uh, uh, what's it, toxic barrel room in the, in the lower bomb site to make it somewhat like the back halls in 1.6. Yeah, if, the, if, that's, uh, if that's a balancing choice that you guys like to explore, definitely do it. I thought I'd just bring it up. But um, yeah, so <sighs> I hope that the, uh, the data that we sh showed was compelling, that in the changes that we want to make, they should be subtle and incremental instead of wholesale, um, and that the changes that we made were educated in our choices. Um, Again, I'll timestamp this for anybody who wants to see it. Uh, I'm not even sure if anyone besides you guys is going to see it, but if they do, that'll be convenient for them. Again, uh, I'll email this to you guys and the Excel sheet. Um, thanks for any feedback you guys have. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, I think that's going to be it.